in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you. Well, have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Like the Bible says. Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Got it like the Bible says. Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it like the Bible says. Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Got it like the Bible says. I'm 
you to go with me tonight I was talking to someone earlier let me lay a little foundation for you I was talking to someone earlier how how that we have people that come They'll come, and they're there for a while, and they, they feel a few touches of God, and, and they, 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 all of a sudden they think they have it all. And by the time you know it, they're gone. Yeah. And then you hear about them later, and you hear that they're, they're somewhere else. And then you hear about them again and they're somewhere else. Yeah. Right. Now listen to me. Listen to me. No matter, I don't care what anybody says, that's not God. Nope. That's right. That's right, amen. That is not the Lord. Right. Come on. God is not a confused God. Right. Jesus. Hallelujah. He knows what he's doing. Yes. I learned from a very young age to stay put, yeah. to let God yes. have his way. Hallelujah. And you know, you, know, you know what's hard is that, is that you have to, by faith, you've got to, whatever you go to or go through, you have to let the Lord yeah. take care of it. Right. You've got to learn to do that by faith. Yeah. And it's not always easy. That's right. Believe me, I know. I've been, right, I've been, I could tell you stuff that I've been through, man, in 48 years that I've been in ministry. And, 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 and you would probably tell me what everybody else has told me. How have you made it this far? Yeah, that's right. Well, I've made it because, for one, the Lord has had his hand on me. Yeah. Yes, hallelujah. There's a purpose for all things. And we're, we're, we're working right now on that. We're, we're seeing that the results of everything we've been through, believe me, we're going to see the results of that in this revival that's already started. Yes. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, you better give him praise. Yes, hallelujah. The Lord, 
prepares people. He prepares people. He doesn't just say, okay, you got to call and go. Right. No, that, that's, not, that's not the Lord. I don't, I, nobody will ever make me believe that. Right. I've seen too many shipwrecked because they, they didn't want to listen. And uh, there were many times I wish my pastor would have kicked me out of the church and, and booted me out to go do something for the Lord. But my pastor knew better. Yeah. Right, amen. And he held on to me as long as he could. And, and sometimes he'll test your faith. God will test your faith. Yeah. He'll test you. Hallelujah. Let, me, let me give you an illustration. I was, I was uh, fighting a case here. I got into trouble before I got saved. That's what brought me to the Lord. And uh, I have a piece of candy in my mouth. <laughs> it's good, man. <laughs> anyway, it, it helps me think. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my brother was living in New Mexico, and I went to live out there with him. The Lord had saved me. I hadn't been saved very long, and I went out there to live with him. I was there with him, uh, helping him and doing different things. And then one day, I got a phone call from my attorney here. I would meet with my attorney. I had a court, uh, 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 an appellate court attorney that was appointed to me. And we would talk regularly. We would get together to see what we we're going to do. I was fighting the state of of Colorado at this point, and uh, I was going through courts. And she would cry, and she would tell me, "I wish I could help you." This is what she would tell me: "I wish I could help you, but they want you in prison." And uh, I used to tell her. Her name was Mary Allen. And I had to tell her, you know what, Mary Allen? You do your part. And we're going to let God do his. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, we went on like that for, for about two and a half years. And finally she called and she said, it's time for you to come. Okay, I says, I'll be there. I came... And there was a courtroom full of people, but none of them were for me. None of them were on my side except me and Mary Allen. And, and I think Pastor Danny went that day. The rest of the people that were in that courtroom were against me. It was packed courtroom. But I want to say there was another person in there yeah. that went with me. With the Holy Spirit. For two and a half years, the Lord taught me how to get on my face and pray. The Lord taught me how to, how to have faith through every, every attack that would come to my life. He, he, taught me, he taught me how to believe when your emotions and your feelings want to pull you another direction and, and, and yet you know you can't go that direction because you're going you're gonna to shipwreck. And so the Lord, the Lord taught me these things on my face. I, I learned these on my face. Every day I'd be in prayer. Hallelujah. Anybody with me? Yes. So when I came to court... I, I never knew, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I came and I shared with them how the Lord had changed my life. How I was no longer the same individual. And the judge that happened to be the best friend of the man that died in that accident, he, he, he looked at me that day and he cut me loose. I don't think he was intending to do that. I don't think 
anybody believed that would happen. They brought my, my record from California and all over. They brought it over here and, 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 and they were not believing for me to be turned loose. I don't think that judge even believed he was going to turn me loose. But God, yes. say it with me, God, God. turned me loose. Yes. You got to understand who you are serving. Yes, that's right. You are serving Almighty God. You're not serving a, a statue or, or 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 a false god or 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 a person or no. You're serving Almighty God. He is the one we serve. And so the Lord, if as I told you this morning, if you look around a big majority of the people that were here before, uh, they're not here. They stayed stuck in their houses. And I'm praying for them. I'm praying. I, I told the, 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 the ladies at the, at the office and all that, call them up. Tell them to come. Tell them we've been waiting for them since May. You know? Uh, tell them to come. You know, people allow fear to control them. People allow fear to take over. Fear is real. Fear is real. Fear, listen to me, the spirit of fear is real. Es un espíritu. And he'll try to govern your thinking. He'll, he'll want to get you to move in the natural things making you believe this is God. But it's not God. He wants you to believe that. Fear is real. Now, now listen to me. There's another part of fear that we, we, we have in our own lives that, that you and I need to see or understand. And that's, you know, the fear of the fear of, of, of putting your hand, like I said this morning, on the top of a stove when you know you shouldn't and, and stuff like that. You know, you, you, you got you to gotta have, you gotta have uh, common sense. Come on. All right? Are you with me? But when, when, you, when you allow fear to paralyze your life, and my God, listen, fear will tell you, okay, tomorrow you go to Walmart you go to Kmart or you go, you go to Sam's Club and buy food and everything and all that. And, and I, I told you the other day there was people at King Super dressed like aliens from head to toe. You know, fear is crazy, man. Fear will paralyze you. And I thought, wow, that's a trip, man. You know, to wear to wear a suit like that at, at a grocery store, you got you, you know you gotta have a lot of nerve to do that. <laughs> Fear will cause you to do crazy things. And I'm fun of these people, man. You know, I mean, I'm telling you the truth. Fear, heavy, heavy duty spirit. And we've all experienced that in one form or another. We've all gone through that. Where you, you and I all of a sudden, we're afraid to do something. Is anybody here? I don't know what they're doing with my mic, but anyway, you and I have got to walk by faith. And God gives you a Bible. Say it with me, a Bible. So that you can follow God through. If, if, listen to me. There's so much crazy stuff, but God right now, listen to me, God right now, is beginning to shut down a lot of churches that were so seeker friendly, they're seeker friendly, 
they're, they're, they're out there, man. They didn't care about people living in sin and all kinds of stuff. Listen to me. Right now, right now, they're being shut down. You and I need to understand that it costed Jesus Christ his life. He was tortured in his body. He was whipped, torn apart, nailed to a cross. Brother, so you and I could be set free. And the Lord understands, listen to me, he sees that, that religion will not save you. you. You and I have to realize that. Religion will not save you. This is what, what Seeker Friendly became. It, it became a way of people s s trying to claim salvation while living in sin. Jesus came to set us free. Yes. Yes. Oh, you need to lift up his name. Yes. He came to deliver us. Yes. He didn't come to, to play games with us or to give us religion. He came to give us a new way, a new way of life. He looked at the disciples now look at this. He looked at the disciples and he told the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am. Thomas looked at Jesus and he says, how do we know the way? How are we going to... He wanted a map, you know, like you turn left on this street and you go up to Jew, Jew Street and... He, they, he wanted some kind of a map like this. And Jesus looked at him and said, Thomas, have I been with you so long you still don't know me? Jesus. Have you not seen me do what I've done right. and you don't know the way there? Jesus. This is what he was saying. If you follow me, yeah. you're going to find your way over yeah. there. You're going to make it over there. Oh, you got to lift up Jesus. Come on. He wasn't talking about religion. He wasn't talking about religion. Brother, I, I hate religion. Oh, listen to me. I hate religion. Religion has killed and destroyed many lives. Many individuals who were meant to go to heaven. Religion will never get you to heaven. Jesus is the answer. But now you wait, you wait a moment, you wait a little bit here before, before all this is over. Well, you don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. But I am going to tell you something. There's going to be a, 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 tur a lot of turmoil in the Catholic Church. I wish they would put that on the... Because there's going to be a lot of Catholics receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost like they have never received it. And then they're going to come and try to pull the rug from right underneath them and try to get them to get back to the Virgin Mary. And they're not going to want to leave the experience they've had with Jesus. They're not going to want to leave it. So let me tell you something. They're going to come and find refuge with their Christian brothers and sisters. Oh, you need to lift up the mighty name of the living God. And they're not the only ones. There's going to be others. There's going to be others. The, the same thing's going to happen to them. You see, you see, you see religion will kill you. It's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's a form of godliness. 
but it isn't the real thing. Anybody home? It's a form, but it's not the real thing. So the Lord is beginning to move right now. Listen to me. The 21st, 2021, God began to move in a different way. Listen to me. He's beginning to move in a way that you and I are going to have to open ourselves up. Listen to me. We're going to see kids coming in with orange hair, yeah. blue hair, you name all kinds of hair, Hallelujah. tattoos. We're going to see them coming in with, 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 those, with those piercings all over their body and everything. Yeah. But the Lord is going to get them and yeah. he's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Friday night, I was sitting out here, and I saw these guys coming, these kids coming, man. I mean, they kept coming. There was about 50 of them. And I saw, I saw a couple of them that walked in there towards the end, and they were gang members. One of them had his rag hanging out, so we went and told him. I told one of the ushers, go tell him to put his rag away. We're not flaunting gangs here. We're flaunting Jesus yeah. here. We didn't chase him. And we're not going to chase him. We're going to let the Lord do a work in him if he keeps coming. But the Lord was showing me through that. This is just the taste. You're just barely seeing it happen. You're just barely seeing it come, come in. They're going to come in and he's going to change them. Oh, my God. Jesus. They're going to go to the streets. Amen. They're going to start telling everybody about Jesus out there. Amen. Can't get you guys to go. So the Lord said, I'm going to send these kids. They don't care. They ain't ashamed. They ain't got no pride. And they're going to go out there, and they're going to start telling the world about Jesus Christ. We're going to see revival. And so here, here the Lord is preparing the body. Right here, look at this. You, 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 you some of you are, are new to this church. Some of you never knew that, how crazy I was with this. But I am, I am, I am, listen to me. I am so serious about what God is doing and wants to do that, man, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm going to see it happen. Amen. I'm going to see it happen. Are you with me, church? Amen. Now, now look at this. Some of you have, have signed off your families. Uh, they'll never get saved. They don't want to. Oh, okay, you, 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 all of a sudden you became God. <laughs> God is going to change yes. the most vile person out there. Yes. He's going to bring them in. Yes. I had to understand something when I first came out here, when I first came here. Every problem we went through, every attack of the devil we faced, and I'm not going to tell it to you because it'll come out on YouTube, and I don't want, I don't want to rise this thing up again, man. I, you know, I went on vacation from it. <laughs> but, but let me, let me, let me tell you something. We went through it. I went through it. Yeah. I went through it. All right. Everybody else was at home, you know. I went through this, but it was necessary yeah. 
for me to go through yeah. it. Yeah. It was necessary. I had to be willing to go through it. Yeah. Oh, you're not hearing me. Yeah. I had to be willing to go through it for this purpose. Yeah. For what's coming. Oh, lift up his name. What a mighty God. Yes. I said, what a mighty yes. God. Yes. And, and, and I had to, listen to me, I had to stay put. I had to stay put. Nobody, nobody knew, man. In fact, I never told the church what was really, I was facing what was going on. Uh, how, how, well, I don't want to even say it, man, through this, but, but, man, let me tell you, man, I faced all kinds of, all kinds of attacks for this purpose. For this purpose. We are going to see revival like there. You're going to see your family come. You're going to see it happen. Are you with me? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's already happening. God understands. God, God sees what's happened. And we're going to see him move. We're going to, we're going to see him move like never before. How many want God to move like never before? A lot of places have never opened up again, and they're not going to open. A lot of, a lot of pastors, listen to me, have wanted to pastor their church through YouTube. How in the world do you pastor a church through YouTube? Huh? How do you do that? You don't. Are you here? So you have to be, you have to be careful. Say it with me. You got to be careful that, that you don't do what you should do. Are you with me? Anybody home? All right. So, so let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. I'm going to, I'm going to be sharing some of this uh, the 30th with some of the leaders, but there's a lot we're going to share in. I, I don't want to share a lot with you what we're going to share with the leaders of the church. But I want to say something to you. I'm not a buffer. I'm not a buffer. Some people have tried to call me a buffer. I'm not a buffer. I'm the servant of God here. And I have to take back my position. Regardless of who likes it or don't. See, see, listen to me. Listen to me. You got to understand something. This is a spiritual life. This is a life with the Lord, a spiritual life. I'm getting ready to, to meet with my leaders because I have some leaders that will see you heading towards danger and instead of telling you something about it, they, they want to love you. Oh, give me a hug. Oh, yeah, I love your dress. So beautiful. Oh, your hair and all that. And yet they, they know what's going on and listen to me. And they want me to do it. 
You know what that is? You know what that is? Listen to me. That's a hireling. That's not a, that's not a, that, oh, you got to hear me tonight. When, when, when you have a calling on your life, I don't care if it's to be a leader in the church, I don't care what it is, you got to love the people more yeah. than you love yourself. Right. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. 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 Oh, he sent him to Pastor Ray. Sent him to Pastor Ray. Sent him to what what's going on with you, man? Why don't you tell them? Yeah. That's right. That's right. See, see, listen to me. You gotta hear me tonight because we're we're living in an hour where we've got to be real. If if I give this couple here nothing but juice, so oh. You're so beautiful. You're bad. You husky. You man. No wonder she married you. And, and let's go eat with me. And, and let's go do this. And let's go do that. And then when you do something wrong, if that person were to try to correct you, you look at them and say, "What's wrong with them?" Is there anybody here? Yes. But and, and they're not doing that. I'm just using them as. Okay, they're not doing that. He won't give me no more popcorn. But, but what I'm saying is that that's not what God called you to do. That if you're a leader, God's called you to correct too. Oh no, if you're going to give him praise, give it to him. We cannot be hirelings. Right. Can't be. We got to be real. Yeah. Amen. <sighs> this is heavy. Yeah. This is heavy. I've never seen a calling that all they do, all they do is give sugar. But no salt. Come on. I don't, I don't read. Give me praise. I don't read in the word where the Lord called the buffer. If you can find it for me in the word of God, I'll read it. All right. Listen to me. You're in the right place. Amen. Because if you're going sideways, I'm going to tell you. Amen. If I don't tell you nothing, it's because you're going the right way. I don't have to tell you nothing. Praise God. I was called. I, I was called by God, church. No, I wasn't appointed. I was not appointed. Nobody appointed me. I was called by God. I'm in my calling. Are you here? Are you with me? And I know everybody needs a little, a little sweet and low once in a while, you know. Uh, I, I, I understand that. Or, or stevia, you know. I understand. But, but you also need correction. When you're going in the wrong direction, if the man of God cannot tell you nothing, listen to me, and you can't receive it from the man of God, listen to me, then you're in trouble. You are in big trouble. And I don't mean you gotta be dirty and, and come out ah like a big old No, you but you gotta let them know the truth yeah. and the truth shall set them yes, free. Yes, and if yes. they if they reject you, let me tell you something, they're rejecting the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Pastor Ray, Pastor Ray. 
Say it again. Pastor Ray. Pastor Ray. Say it again. Pastor Ray. Pastor Ray. You're saying that so you won't forget who I am. Amen. All right. Now, now say it with me. Pastor Ray. Pastor Ray. You're not a buffer. You're nobody's buffer. Are you with me, church? You're a man of God. Come on. Okay, now, now I, want you to, I want you to see this with me. God, God brings you to a place. You, you cannot grow without the word. You, you cannot grow, listen to me, in, in healthy, spiritual health without the Word of God. And, and I know today so many of you get on that internet and you get so many things from there and everything. And then you come here and you, ah, oh, well, you're not like Joyce Myers. No, I'm not a female. She wears women's shoes, I wear men's shoes. Listen to me. Listen to me. God has you in a place because that's the place God is going to form your life. Amen. He's going to form your heart, yes. your mind. Yes. He's going to use you. Yes. He's going to use you. Say, use me, Lord. Use All right, so I want you to go with me to the book of Acts. Chapter 27. Remember that the Word of God is a spiritual book. It's a spiritual book. It's not a, it's not a book, a, a fantasy book or a, or a cowboy book or anything like that. This is a spiritual book. This book belongs to God. This is God's book. This is His Word to you and I, to help us. Say it with me, to help us. All right? This morning, the Lord, this morning as I was speaking to the church, the Lord gave me this word for tonight. All right? So I, wanna, I want you to go with me through it. We're going to go through uh, Acts chapter 27, and we're going to read down from verse 14 down, but I want you to hear me before we go there. The Apostle Paul had already, had already been to the church. He had been preaching. He had been all over. And he happened to come to some brothers and sisters that he had already brought to the Lord in chapter 21. And you can read it later, okay? And, and he told them there, he says, he says, my time is up. I'm going to, to go back to Jerusalem and you'll see me no more. He already knew. The Lord had already showed him. That, that this was his, the end for him. All right, are you with me? So, so the church, how did, how did he do it? A prophet went in and put his belt on him, and he began to prophesy to the owner of that belt, which was Paul. And he said, this is it for Paul, no more. Well, the Holy Spirit had already been showing Paul that. Okay? Are you with me? God will always show you. Listen to me. The majority of the time when somebody gives you a word, it's going to be because God has already spoke to you about it. And he's going to confirm that word. All right? So here Paul is on his way to, to Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem, they're going to send him to Rome because they took him, they arrested him, and they're, they're, going, to, they're going to take him to Rome. He's going to die. They're, they're going to put, put him to death. You know, in our time, in our age, we look at it like, how could it be so crazy that they would arrest you for for preaching Jesus. What's wrong with Jesus? But we're at that point again. We're at that point again where people don't like that name. You, you could say Mohammed, you could say 
hear a Krishna, you could say all kinds of things, but if you say Jesus, everybody looks at you like, oh, what's wrong with you? See? Why? I don't know. Because all he did was die for him. Is that a trip? I don't know about you. I think it's a trip. All right. So here Paul is in a ship. And there's a lot of men in that ship. They, they, they estimate that there was probably over 500 men in that ship with Paul. Look at this building. Look at the, the roof. Look at the walls. Look, look at the altar. Look up there. Look at the top of the altar. Look, look where the piano is at. Look, look, look all around you here. And, and then, then say this to me. Pastor, this is God's ship. This is the ship of God. He's brought us here. He brought you. You might say, oh, no, no, I made a decision, you know, me, I, well, nobody tells me what to do. No, don't be so crazy. God brought you. Yes. So look what happens. They're in the ship. And look what happens here. From, let's read from verse 14 down. Look what he says. But soon afterwards, a violent wind of the character of a typhoon. Imagine that, that, that wind, that, that storm was, was a heavy storm. Called a northeaster came bursting down from the island. They're in the, in the ship. They're in the ship, man. And look what it says. And when the ship was caught and was unable to hit against the wind, we gave up and letting her drift were borne along. They just let the wind take the ship. They just let whatever course the, the wind wanted to take the ship to take it. Let's go on. We ran and under the shelter of a small island called Kaura, where we managed with much difficulty to draw the ship's small boat on the deck and rescue it. After hoisting it on board, they used supports with ropes to undergird and brace the ship, then afraid that they would be driven into the citrus, the quicksand off the north coast of Africa. They lowered the gear, sails, and ropes, and so were driven along. As we were being dangerously tossed about by the violence of the storm, in other words, this storm was heavy duty. Right. Say it with me. This storm was heavy duty. This storm was heavy duty. Now look at this. The next day, they began to throw the freight Overboard. They begin to throw everything overboard. All right, let's go. And the third day, they threw out with their own hands the ship's equipment, the tackle, and the furniture. They start throwing everything out. And when neither sun nor stars were visible for many days, and no small tempest kept raging about us, in other words, the raging came from a large wind. It, was, it wouldn't stop. Right. It kept hitting them. Are you with me, church? Yes. Anybody here? Yes. All hope of our being saved was finally abandoned. The, the, the men that were running the ship, listen to me, yeah. you've got to have more courage yeah. than, than anything. You've got, this is why God has taken me through whatever I have gone through because I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to abandon ship. Oh, you need to lift up the name of Jesus.
we're going to see revival. Yes. We're going to see God move like never before in this place. Yes. We're going to see it happen. Amen. Praise God. Now look at this. Yeah. Then as they had, had eaten nothing for a long time, Paul came forward into their midst and said, Men, you should have listened to me. Paul told him from the beginning, let's not sail off right now. But then he wanted to listen. He said, you should have listened to me and should not have put to sea from Crete and, and brought on this disaster and harm and misery and loss. You should have never sailed off. You should have listened to me. The Holy Spirit was trying to use Paul yeah. to keep them from this danger. Listen, look up here at me. That's what I'm here for, for you. Yeah. Say it with me. Pastor, Pastor. You're, not you're not a buffer. You're a shepherd. Praise God. Are you with me, church? My, my, my obligation to you from the Lord is to help you, to help guide you, lead you. Try to bring you to that place where where God can lift you up and bless your life in a big way, in a way that you've never seen before. That's my, my yeah. job. <laughs> but you can't lead people who don't want to be led. You can't lead people who don't want to be led. It, there's a saying that says you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And see, when we become those kind of people, when you become those kind of people that all you want to do is be huggy, huggy, and, 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 and sweet this, and oh, you're so beautiful, that oh, let's go eat together, and, and let's go there. Okay, listen, listen to me. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with eating together. It's what's going on Deeper than that in the life of that person. When that person is corrected, they don't know how to receive it. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Praise God. Say it with me again. Pastor, Pastor. you're not a buffer. Not a buffer. You, are a you are a shepherd. That's my job. Yes. That's what God called me to do. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what I'm trying to do, if you will let me. Yeah. But you can't lead everybody because there's some people, man, let me tell you. Paul saying to them, you know what Paul is to say? If you'd have listened to me, this would have never happened. Right. But they wouldn't listen. Right. Jesus. See, there, there's, a, there's a difference. Yeah. He said, if, if you'd have listened to me, this would have never happened. Amen. Let's go on, look at this. But even now, he says, I beg you to be in good spirits. Look at Paul. He says, you didn't listen to me the first time. Now, if you listen to me this next time, you'll be okay. He says, even now, I beg you to be in good spirits and take heart. For there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. God had already shown Paul. Listen, he's saying, don't, don't, don't jump up, don't, don't do your own thing now, come on. How many know we, fear, fear will cause you to do what you want? You know, fear is the ugly enemy of the body of Christ. 
And then when we, when we, when we get hit by the enemy, then we're saying, I should have listened. I should have just done what they said. But, but listen to me. It, it, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to harm you. And I'm not here to control you. But I'm here to shepherd you. And there's a lot of sheep, you know, in the, in the Bible, they, they'd break the leg of that lamb, and then the shepherd would carry it until the leg would heal again, because that lamb kept going in different directions, trying to do its own thing. Well, you know, you're a lamb, but man, if I broke your leg, you're kind of heavy duty, I'm not going to carry you. Praise God. Thank you, Are you understanding me here yes. tonight? Yes. Look at this. But even now I beg you to be in good spirits and take heart for there will be no loss of life among you but only of the ship. Let's go on. For this very night they stood by my side. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly, but I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to Him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner. And I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.